Grubhub Perks give you deals on the food you love. The kind of deals that make you boogie. Today's sewing tutorial will be how to make little hive grubs. These malicious creatures are so adorable I had to sew them. The materials I need for this are the grub sewing patterns. They will look different in this video as I'm using an older template. you will need is a tan or beige color and lots of that. I got two felt pieces. You will also need lots of brown and I'm not exaggerating. You will need lots of brown and green. Other required materials are needles and pins. You will also need an assortment of threads. The only colors you'll need from this is tan, green, and brown. You will also need scissors that can cut through fabric and thread. And some type of marking system. Right here, I'm using a Crayola marker. This later on will uh, stain my hands. An optional piece would be a sewing machine as this will make the process much faster. But all this can be hand sewn. You will also need stuffing for your piece. Now onto the main tutorial. To start off this project, you will need your beige or tan piece of fabric, and your belly piece, and your top piece. You'll need to mark these onto your tan or beige piece of fabric, and then cut them out. Your pieces should look similar to this. This right here is the belly piece, and here's the top pieces. For now, put them off to the side. Grab your green fabric and your eyepiece. With this green fabric, trace out three green eyes. Here are my three green eyes. Your eyes may look different to mine because all of us cut differently and that is a-okay. Your eyes do not have to be perfect as these will be later on sewn onto the headpiece. But for now, put them off to the side. Onto the slightly harder part of this project, you will need your brown. There is going to be a lot of brown pieces scattered around your room, so try to keep track of them. To start off, grab your headpiece. and your tail piece. You will need to trace out one head piece and four tail pieces. Here's what the pieces look like. Take your tail pieces and put them good side to good side. Good side to good side means the pieces that are not marked with the Sharpie or marker and put them off to the side. Getting into the more scary parts of this project, you will need your brown. There's going to be a lot of tiny brown pieces, so be prepared. To start off, grab your spike piece. You will need to cut 12 spikes. Place your spike piece upright and then flip it. Do this all the way until you have 12 spike pieces. Here are the spike patterns. Voila! Not that many, right? You will then need to find a sewing pin and pin each piece good side to good side. Place them accordingly, three on top, three on bottom. But for now, just put them off to the side. Now this is goody old. you'll need a brown again. Lots of it. You also need another pattern, feet. You will need to trace 20 feet. When you're done tracing and cutting them out, pin them good side to good side and set them off to the side. Going back to the beginning, grab your top pieces. On the most curved side, so from here all the way down, stopping here. Then grab the belly part, attach it to the top pieces. Somewhere on these pieces that meet, make sure that there is a hole somewhere where you can turn the whole thing inside out. Your piece may look different depending on how you measured it, as I had a little excess fabric. Turning the piece inside out, it should look like a loaf of bread. Do not eat this. This is fabric. Moving on, take your tail pieces, good side to good side. Pinning these pieces, start from the bottom, make your way to the top, and sew all the way down to the bottom again. Make sure to have a gap. 
This is what it looks like before you turn it inside out. Use a pen or a stick of some sort to turn it inside out. Moving forward, take the spike pieces. Start from the curved edge, make your way to the top, and straight down. They should look like Hershey Kisses. Leave a gap on the bottom so you can turn them inside out. Finally, the feet. These feet pieces should be placed good side to good side. You'll figure out later on why there are so many feet pieces. Starting from the bottom, make your way to the top and stop, leaving a gap. After that, stuff all the pieces. Then take your eye pieces and your head piece. This is the part where the hand sewing comes in. You will need your brown thread and a sewing needle. You will need a decent amount of thread. Thread this through the eye of the needle and do not forget to attach a knot. Taking your head piece, place the topmost eye. Take your needle and start on the bottom of the brown. Then poke the needle through the eye. Pull the needle towards you. Then take the needle and pass it through the brown, underneath the green. Repeat this process throughout all the eyes, and don't forget to end it with a knot. The grub's face should look like this. Putting this off to the side, grab the body. You will also need the tail pieces. Starting with the body, we're gonna close the gap. Take your needle and start on the top both side. The color thread is the beige at the beginning. Pull the needle upwards. And then poke the needle through the bottom of the belly. Go under and over. This kind of stitch is kind of like a funky ladder stitch. There's lots of video tutorials on how to do a ladder stitch. This is also called an invisible stitch. To close this, you will need to take your thread and pull lightly. If you pull too quickly, you may snap the thread and have to restart the sewing process. Do this technique to close the hole. After closing the hole, grab out your tails, which kind of look like sausages and then grab your body. You will need to attach the tail pieces to the spikiest part of the body. Grabbing a needle and one of the tails, start from the underside of the tail piece and poke your needle through. Here, I messed up a lot trying to get the stinking needle to get through the brown. It may take you a few tries too. Place your tail piece to the body, and then take your needle and go into the tan, poking the needle out of the tan. Proceed to pull the thread and attach the tail to the body by poking your needle through the brown again and then going into the tan all the way around. Your tail pieces and body piece should be attached like this. Yours may look different and that is okay. Proceed to find your spike pieces. You will need three spikes on each side of the top. You're going to use the same technique to sew these pieces together as you did for the tail. Here's a visual of where the spike placements should be. After placing your spikes, take your headpiece. It is basically the same way as how you attach the spike and tail pieces to the body.
Find your feet pieces. The placement of these feet pieces should be two in the front. Three on the side and two on the back near the tail. Take Grubby and put him on his back and take one of the brown feet. Thread your needle through both parts of the foot. Proceed to attach this to the belly, going through the tan and making your way into the brown. When your thread is in place, pull lightly on the thread. Do this for all the pieces and don't forget to attach a knot. Time to show off Grubby's feet placements. Here we have two on the side, three in the middle, and two in the back. Now that you have completed your own little hive grub, you can now proceed to chuck them as you do in the game. Whenever that might be, or you can just cuddle them. Yeah.